Hey everyone, I am back with another video. Since I last spoke to you, I've actually been out and I've done two shoots. So I've visited both Leeds and Nottingham since the last time we've spoke. I've implemented some of the changes that I discussed in the first video. If you haven't seen that, make sure you check that out now before watching this video. The cue card will appear just up there. So go check that out. It's a little bit longer than this video is going to be, but I think it's definitely worth a watch and it kind of fills you in with what this series of videos is all about. If you haven't already, please uh, you know, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the videos or if you want to see more of them or if you just want to support me, which would be absolutely amazing. So make sure you go do that now. Okay, so last week I went to Sheffield. I intended on coming back and kind of debriefing and doing the whole process of kind of just discussing how the day went at the end of the day, but I was absolutely shattered. So rather than kind of do that, I thought I'd take a couple of days, I'd edit the images and kind of cut out that bit where I talk about the shots before I've edited them. Whereas I can talk about my composition and stuff and show you the edits and kind of just compact the whole video. And just one thing led to another and the video got pushed back, pushed back. And then this week I went out and I did another shoot. So I thought now that I've edited those images, it would be a really good opportunity for me to kind of look back on the Sheffield images and share them with you guys whilst reflecting on what I did, why I did it and how I think I could improve. So let's get started taking a look at the images and as I talk through them I kind of talk about the whole experience of Sheffield. Okay so I'm going to apologise in advance if I get anybody's name wrong or I mispronounce them because I'm not great with names. I think this is Zuhur and Zuhur was the first person I approached in Sheffield and asked if I could take their portrait. You could tell in the images that I took of her she felt a little bit uncomfortable about having me photograph her and I did try to be quite friendly and approachable and kind of put her at ease but I, you can just tell it's a very uncomfortable experience for her. This is the best shot out of the ones that I've taken. Uh, she looks slightly less uncomfortable and a li little bit more like she's in the moment. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. Out of the images, it's the least awkward out of all of them. And I, I had this problem with um, people feeling awkward in the images that I shot in Leeds, and I, I thought I would you know, spend more time trying to converse and explain what it was about, what I was going to use them, and just try to put the, pe the subjects at ease. Now, I, I feel like I did a relatively good job of this um, in Sheffield. A lot of the images are a lot more relaxed in terms of the subject's facial expressions and pose and, and such like. I might have been slightly off my game on this one because it was the first portrait that, you know, this was the first time I'd approached somebody in Sheffield um, on this day. But there's also the fact that not everybody is confident in front of the camera. Not everybody is going to just automatically drop into it and, and be comfortable in front of that lens so I kind of just have to accept that and move on. In terms of the framing and composition of this shot when I saw Zahir approach and I, I was in the kind of main stretch of the Sheffield City Centre and I saw this coloured background and the colours weren't overly saturated they weren't really really poppy but I thought by placing uh, Zahir in front of that there would be enough sort of color contrast to really make her stand out and I, I shot this at f2.8 I can't remember the camera settings but for anybody that's interested I will put them in when I'm editing the video so that was the the choice and I'm shooting on 50 mil and I'm trying to get close in I want the majority of these portraits to feel sort of intimate without being uncomfortable so Okay, let's move on to our next shot. Okay, so this is Sophie. Sophie was happy for me to pose. I, I took a few of Sophie, just uh, trying to get the, the crop right on the camera so that when I cropped it down to a 10 by eight, I knew I would have the right shot. I can't remember exactly, it, it, I, I know in my head where it is, um, but I can't remember the, the name of the place, but you can kind of see it very blurred out in the background. 
But what caught me about this location were the rows of trees. Um, and I knew that with my F2.8, throwing those out of focus, they would create this really, really nice sort of framing feature around the subject if I could get it balanced. The only thing I think I would change in this shot is a subject with brighter hair. I think that Sophie's hair is too similar in in brightness to the background. Um, and the only thing that's making the, the hair color stand out is the color itself. If it had been a slightly brighter color, it would have popped and, and, and enhanced the image. But overall, I really, really like this shot. Sophie was a natural. Um, she really sort of dropped into posing for the camera but not posing and being somebody else but just being herself in front of the camera it was it was really quick and easy to photograph Sophie so thank you very much Sophie if you're watching this you're an absolute star and then we'll move on to the next shot okay so this shot is Bev um, Bev was on a fag break if I remember correctly and Bev stood out because I hadn't at this at that point photographed anybody that was you know older um, so I saw Bev having a fag and I instantly knew there was a story in her fate. Bev was telling me that I, I didn't want her as a subject because you know, she was old and wrinkly and I'm like, yeah, but that's exactly, you know, that's, you have a story to tell, your face tells a story. And she wasn't offended by that. She, I think she kind of understood what I was trying to get at. Bev was, you know, really, really nice because we did stop and, uh, well, say stop but we we talked whilst we were getting the images and whilst Bev was signing model release and and it was really nice it was just two people meeting and having a conversation um and, and you know at the same time Bev was helping me out in terms of the composition for this image um I wanted again a, a sort of intimate feeling to the portrait which is why I've gone sort of a, a half shot you know head of, like, sort of body shot and, and position beds on eyes on the top uh, rule of third. In terms of the background, there you know you had the harsh sunlight coming through because at this point the sun was out and it was quite strong. So I positioned Bev in a little bit of shade from a tree, and I knew that the trees behind and the, the buildings would give this kind of dappled effect to the background. So that's why I positioned Bev where I did. One of the things that you'll see in the portraits are quite often there is background noise in the sense of like there's people walking about or there's shops and things but that subconscious kind of selection of the images because so, there are some images where i've taken shots and it's quite a clean background but the shots where there are people in the frame sort of in the background it tells the story of this is a portrait on the street of somebody i don't know and it kind of enhances that narrative so that's the reason why i've done that okay so this is zara i took a few of zara this was the one that kind of expressed the the narrative that i wanted a little bit more the shots that i took of zara were very you know they were great shots but the, the slightly closer ones were, they kind of felt like just a portrait, like a paid portrait on location. Very flattering and, and very nice shots, but I, whilst obviously I want the images to be flattering, I don't want them to come across as, oh, this is a portrait shoot. And so I've, I've taken a slightly longer shot here and I'm using the alleyway behind Zara to use, you know, to create those leading lines that you would have seen in the first image, uh, in the first video to kind of pull attention to her face. This is another one of those instances where I'm gonna absolutely destroy somebody's name and I am really, really sorry. Um, I think it's Boheng, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that and if it's not, and if you're watching the video, please, uh, you know, correct me on the pronunciation because I'm, I'm terrible. Um, so again, this is the you know exact same location and these were taken maybe two, three minutes apart. But what captured me with this subject was, you know, the, the red and the black, the red checkered shirt, the blue face mask, but also this plastic tub that he was carrying. And he, when I went to take his portrait, he went to put it down. I'm like, no, no, you know, let's have it in the shop because it's part of the reason why I approached him. 
So I wanted to include that. It shows that you know he's out shopping and he's, he's doing his daily kind of routine and he's just passing through. So I really, really like this shot. There's, you know, with the face mask on, it, ha it has something to it. So compositionally, very, very similar to Zara's shot beforehand. The choices have all been made the same. It's just, again, a slightly longer shot because I wanted to include that sort of plastic box that he's carrying as well to kind of add to the narrative of the shot. Okay, this is Aaron. A couple of things that kind of pulled my attention to Aaron was the sort of contrast between the hair and the t-shirt. Um, obviously it's tattooed and anybody with tattoos in my eyes is badass. But also he kind of reminds me of one of my children, Corey. Kind of when I saw him, he looks like an older version of, of one of my kids. So that was probably a big factor in why I asked whether I could take his portrait. So in terms of background selection, you've got this grey shot great. And I thought that it would, you know, the, the, just the dullness of the background would make those colours pop. If I'd taken this shot again, I would probably increase that distance just to blow that background out a little bit more. Yeah, other than that, I'm quite happy with it. It's, it's a really good shot and hopefully Aaron's very happy with it. Okay, so here we have another face mask shot. I think this is actually shot in the same place as Aaron. It's another shot great. And I think I, I have actually increased that distance between subjects and background to blur that out, which is why it looks slightly different. So I took quite a few shots of Tracy. We took some shots where it was a slightly longer shot. We took the closer up sort of portrait shot and then we did the same thing with the face mask off. I've gone with the face mask because you've got the, the bright colors in the face mask that really, really pop out against kind of the blandness of everything else. It also kind of marries up with the, the lanyard that we've got around the neck and the eyes in this portrait really, really stand out to me. Having the colour, I think that kind of enhances the eyes a little bit as well. So very, very happy with this shot. Okay, so this is the final shot from Sheffield and then we'll kind of do a, a summary and like the, the lessons I've learned and what I took over into Nottingham with me as well. This shot is of Grace and Noah. So I asked them if I could photograph them and initially they weren't too keen um, on having the photograph taken. Once I explained what it was and I showed my Instagram profile to, to show them that I was serious about what I was doing, then they were more than happy. You can see that they, probably feel a little bit uncomfortable about being asked by a stranger to have their portrait taken, but this shot, it captures a moment. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on, it's quite busy, and there's certain things about it, if I could change, you know, if I could have gone back or, or placed them somewhere else, I probably would have. I don't like the bin behind Noah at all. I, I, it's just this big black blob. Um, you can tell it's a bin, and I, I just don't like that. I, you know, I would have like that to be gone completely. I'm not 100% keen on the bear in the background. I, I think I find that a little bit distracting. Maybe if it had been, you know, facing the other way, so it was almost looking over them or looking, you know, looking at them, then that might have had added something to the image. But I don't, th I really don't feel that it adds anything. I do think that that's overridden by this moment between the two of them. And it, it's almost like just a, a street, you know, just like a street shot where I've captured this moment in passing. I've just stopped taking a picture and walked on. It's not posed. It's not uh, a, a, the intimate portraits that I've been taking. It's, it's kind of more of a moment, but I do like the shot, definitely. Okay, so let's wrap up with a kind of review of what I did how I feel I improved on my previous experiences from Leeds and what I'm going to take going forward. So probably one of the biggest things is the fact that I did indeed ditch my Bronica. So I just focused on shooting digital. Um, so shooting digital allowed me to just be confident and work in a way that I, I have done for, for a very long time. Another thing that I noticed is I haven't taken the 50mm lens off since I shot at Leeds. Um, well, since I, I kind of came out of Leeds and I put the 50mm on. Um, so everything's kind of been shot with the 50mm lens, if, if I remember correctly. And it's all been shot at 2.8. 
so again i don't have to worry about zooming in or you know i can if, if i want to get closer to a subject i just physically move closer um, and that creates that intimacy in the portrait because i'm physically standing closer i don't want my, my subjects to be uncomfortable so i'm not standing too close but i am approaching them a little bit more um, so in terms of how i've been interacting with people i feel that i'm a lot more confident now i think in leeds i was out of my comfort zone because i'd not been there before it was the first shoot of the project and i was kind of still finding my feet and i was putting a lot of pressure on myself by expecting myself to do all the things um so i've been to sheffield before i've photographed people in sheffield before and i know that people are quite friendly and approachable so i felt a lot more confident just approaching random people and and asking them whether i can take their portrait in terms of what i'm going to do going forward i'm going to make an effort to make sure that i um, being more diverse and um, multicultural in my selection of subjects because that's what the the portrait of Britain Awards is about it's all about who makes Britain in a post brexit society the only reason I haven't is my own um, insecurities if you will but other than that I, I, I'm kind of happy with how things are going and I don't think I'm gonna change too much next time um, obviously I've already been to Nottingham I've already shot that and I will record a video about those images and the compositions and, and things um, in a couple of days and then get that out as well the next place I'm thinking of visiting might be Peterborough or Leicester I have a GoPro well it's not a GoPro it's a, 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 you know a, a cheaper brand um, but I'm considering what like strapping a, a GoPro um, to me and maybe doing a bit of vlogging whilst I'm out so just so it's not you know li you listening to me talking about images all the time you can maybe see what's going on as well so I may give that a go but that may overcomplicate matters for me I'm not sure um, but we'll, we'll see hopefully I, I will brave it and I'll give it a go and you'll just have to be nice if it's all absolutely terrible quality video Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it there. If you have stuck around for this whole video, I really, really appreciate your time and your support. If you haven't, maybe go check me out on Instagram because I'm posting these um, images on a, on a regular as well as any of the street images that I've taken. And you'll probably get to see these images or the images from Nottingham before I publish the video on YouTube. So you'll get a head start on everybody else. And I said it at the start, but if you enjoyed this video, even though it's just been me talking, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel maybe. Um, not all of my videos are gonna be like this. I am aiming to do a lot more kind of tutorial based stuff. Um, if as I add to my kit, I might throw in some reviews and I'd really like to kind of start working on my video and do some, maybe some video portraits behind the scenes kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so there's lots to subscribe for in the future when I, when I get on it and, and get sort of proactive about it. Okay, that's it from me. Have a wonderful day. I will see you guys in the next video.